the water off the table. Yep, I'll put it down here. Yeah. Yep, perfect. Mr. Conwell, good to see you. Okay, we're going to go ahead and get started with the Indiana State Press Conference. A few announcements. As a courtesy to your fellow media members and team participants, please silence your cell phones. Please provide your name and media affiliation <clears throat> each time you ask a question during the press conference. And if you're joining on Zoom, please use the raise hand function for questions. We will address questions in the room first, then go to the Zoom. And as an NCAA rule, uh, recording press conferences on cell phones or cameras is prohibited. So Coach, uh, we are joined by Coach uh, Josh Schertz, uh, Robbie Avila, and Ryan Conwell. And Coach, if you do an opening statement, then we'll go to the players, finish up with the players, and come back to Coach. Just, uh, you know, obviously first, uh, congratulations to Utah on an incredible year. That's a great basketball team. We just, um, you know, every time we thought we hit them with a knockout punch, they kept coming. Uh, thought we took a, a great shot from them. You know, 17 for 29 from three is hard to do, you know, by yourself. Um, so to do that in a game of these stakes is credit to them. But uh, um, they've had, they have a great team, very well coached, and uh, just, you know, uh, it, was, it was a high quality game both ways. Really proud of our guys. Um, you know, they're, they're, they're tough to deal with. Uh, we struggled to get stops, but I thought we were just, you know, we were really good offensively, uh, made it hard on them. They, they, you know, threw a lot at us, you know, man, uh, zone, uh, switching man, uh, different types of zones um, from 1-3-1 one, one to 2-3, et cetera. And I thought our guys, you know, as they have all year, just were able to handle it with intelligence and poise and attack it correctly. One turnover the entire second half for, for our team. And, um, just thought we, we worked together to collectively to, to, to attack whatever they threw at us uh, in a really intelligent way. And um, we hung on, got enough stops to win, uh, even though it didn't feel like it. So incredibly proud of these guys. Uh, can't wait to, you know, I'm excited uh, to, to get to coach them again tomorrow and certainly can't wait till Thursday night. Okay, we're going to start on this side of the room. Raise your hand if you want to ask the players questions. If it's general for both players, Robbie, if you would start, then Ryan. So first question for the players. This side, anything? Okay. <clears throat> Mike Lepresti, instillate.com. For both players, um, you win the game in this event, you play that well with that crowd. How much fun did you just have the last two hours? Uh, it's, it's been amazing. You know, this entire run from the starting at the Holman Center, those three games, you've been, you know, sellout crowds, been a lot of fun to, to coming to Hinkle and, you know, seeing a sea of blue. You know, obviously Utah was a really good team. You know, it was a great game, but to, to continue to play in front of our fans like that is just, uh, it's been a blessing. Uh, first and foremost, I want to say all glory to God. I'm just blessed just to be part of such a great team. I just love playing with these guys. Like, just going out there and just being able to just go to war with them and just play the game that we love to play. And especially, you know, being back in my hometown, it's just all a blessing. So, you know, it's just nothing but fun out there, so. Uh, Hunter Tickle, Tribune Star. Ryan and Robbie, you guys can both take this. Um, Coach just mentioned how you guys took care of the ball better in the second half. Utah especially took care of the ball in the, in the first half, and it, it, it seemed like you guys had some pretty big steals there um, in that second half, especially those final eight minutes to kind of you know cement the win. Um, what can you say about just kind of how you guys were able to maybe uh, speed them up a bit or kind of keep them on their, on their, on their toes and, uh, and get some steals? Uh, it's just a credit to our guards. You know, those guys give it their all defensively. You know, especially Swope. You know, Swope, uh, Jew, and Ryan. You know, they're they're, you know, uh, hard to go against when they're when they're you know really locked in and you know they get steals. Their they ball pressure is just in insane. And so when you when you got those three on the on the defensive side, it's really uh, hard for teams to you know run their stuff. And so I think it just allowed us to kind of create turnovers and and really get some easy buckets. Yeah, kind of like what Robbie said. We just. You know, uh, we had to do what we had to do to win. So whatever it took, you know, um, we were willing to do. And, you know, Drew came up with some big steals towards the end as well. So we just had to do what we had to do, so. Rick Simler from WTHI TV. Uh, Robbie and Ryan. Robbie, you started off hot. Ryan, you were steady the whole game. Isaiah got really hot in that second half. Just talk about the way you guys continue just to feed off each other at different moments in the game. 
uh, I think just teams had to ch uh, pick their poison, really. You know, obviously in the beginning of the game, I was able to get open, and so I was able to get going, but then they really started to, you know, focus on me, and, you know, they switched defenses, went to switching five and zone, and that kind of started to create for, for Ryan and Swope. And so they, uh, I think just the, the ability of everybody for just to, to sacrifice and just allow whoever, you know, has the hot hand to continue going is, you know, the reason why we're able to, to put up so many points like that. Yeah, I think it just shows just how good of a team we are. I feel like, you know, teams can't really key on just one person. So, and I feel like, you know, in the end, it helps all of us, you know, be able to do what we want to do on the court, so. Yeah, Jack Burney, WTWO, for both of you guys. I mean, we've talked about the fan support throughout this NIT run. Started at the Holman Center today. It felt like the whole crowd was full of Sycamore Blue. I know you guys have talked about it a lot this season, but what is the support, continuous support from the people of Terre Haute, the ISU community mean to you guys? Uh, I think like we said all every, every time, you know, it's been a blessing, you know, to continue to play in front of this crowd and this uh, environment is, you know, been amazing. You know, uh, I think we're doing it for more than just, you know, our team, you know, we're doing it for the entire city of Terre Haute, you know, Indiana State University and just being able to play games in front of them again is just, you know, like I said, been a blessing. Yeah, it's definitely all just a blessing. You know, it's something I've never, you know, really experienced before and it's something I don't want to take for granted, you know, just having all those people just coming in and support us, you know, um, we feed off of that energy as well. So. Just playing in front of a fan base like that is, you know, nothing short but a blessing. So, Greg. Hey, Ryan. Uh, Greg Doyle with the Indianapolis Star. Your uh, shooting percentages, and, and you're like all your teammates, they, they get better every year. But I'm just wondering, what did Josh do? What did you do to make across the board your shooting numbers go up so high? Not just points, but, you know, efficiency. Yeah, really, uh, first, I, I want to shout out, you know, AP, um, Alex Beaver, uh, our trainer. Uh, he just, um, he works with me all the time. Just day in and day out, early mornings, late nights, before practice, after practice, you know, just um, tell me what I need to do in the game, you know. Um, so I want to give out a, a shout out to AP. Um, we've been putting in a lot of work and I'm just glad, you know, it, it's paying off, so. Okay, we got two more questions for the players. Go ahead. Robbie, Mark Bennett from the Tribune Star in Terre Haute. Um, those are some big dudes in there inside. Uh, talk about having to neutralize what they do in some degree to get what you guys got done uh it's a it's a physical game you know especially at this level you know you got you know sitting there both you know both of their big guys were you know seven feet tall you know real strong dudes and so uh you just got to be able to step up to the challenge you know it starts uh, it starts in the summer when you're putting in the work in the weight room and so uh it's just something i'm trying to develop my game still you know obviously i'm not there yet but uh just continue to get better and uh you know it's dealing with physical guys like that you gotta you gotta be ready Owen Pulley, WZIS Student Media. Uh, Robbie, talk about the uh, the start of the game. You just start shooting threes, top of the key. You love that spot, and you, you find wide open shots there. Uh, it's just uh, my teammates creating for me. You know, uh, a lot of that is, you know, I got the first one in transition. You know, I was able to knock that one down, and then the other ones were, you know, I think Ryan and Drew came off ball screens, got downhill, and were able to, you know, draw the big man and then kind of kick it out to me. So, you know, I don't get those open shots if, you know, they don't get downhill and create it for me. So, you know, it's just within the system, and, you know, those guys are able to make plays for me. Okay, we want to thank the players, and we'll dismiss them and get to questions for Coach Schertz. We'll start on this side if anybody's uh, – Got questions, then we'll come back over this side. Coach, you talk about this is the fourth time that you scored 100 points this season. Um, how do you guys get the, the offensive firepower going that causes to score so many points? I think, you know, it's uh, just credit to our guys. We got really, really talented guys who are. Uh, super skilled. Uh, they're incredibly unselfish and smart. I mean, so, um, you know, they, they uh, you know, there's an old quote, I think, uh, simplicity is the ultimate sophistication. And uh, these guys make uh, the complex look look pretty easy. So um, there's a lot of firepower, a lot of diversity. Uh, we got five live guys out there at all times, um, whether it's Julian attacking the paint, Isaiah's, you know, as ignitable as any player in the country, Ryan, is playing at an elite level. Robbie, Jason Kent with all the cutting and movement. And then whatever you throw at them, uh, they're able to uh, attack it, decipher what it was. They were, you know, jumping and pressing late game in that scenario. They, you know, we, we saw, you know, zone, one, three, one, two, three, switching man, drop man, um, you know, a little bit of everything. And, and they just, just that combination of, of skill, um, unselfishness, uh, and the intelligence is to have that many guys with those character traits is pretty rare. Okay. Coach Mark Bennett from the Tribune Star in Terre Haute. 
how did you strategize for this team? This is a very big team, probably the largest team you've played this season, maybe in the three years you guys have had. Yeah. Uh, going to the game, I thought the game plan was, was pretty simple. We were going to try to um, – and I thought we did a good job early, you know, trap the post. You know, we call it MIG for most important guy, but trap with Robbie um, and try to force Carlson baseline to his left hand. And, um, you know, we were really effective early. And then when they went and they took – uh, they took lo uh, Lovering out, right? They took their fives out, and then they put uh, the younger Carlson uh, in number one. And then that became more difficult because there's nowhere to trap off of because, we didn't, you know, the fives were non-shooters. So we could trap off them. Um, so it really – we had to adjust to that. And, and um, we got – you know, obviously we gave up some two-point baskets. But biggest thing we, we told our guys was, you know, we were going to have to fight. And they were able – you know, there, there was, you know – Utah's huge. Uh, they are they are really physical. Um, those guys are skilled. I think Carlson, uh, you know, Brandon Carlson's an NBA level guy. Um, just the talent, the touch, the shooting ability. Uh, Madsen's you know tough to guard, but you know Julian Larry. If I'm gonna ever get into a deal where somebody's got to chase a guy off a hundred screens, I'm I'm always choosing Julian Larry to do that. So he was phenomenal defensively and got 15, eight, and one turnover. So uh, underratedly uh, elite performance. Another one by him. Okay, last question on this side, then we'll move back over here to finish off. Travis A with the Press Box 812 Sports. Uh, Coach, let's talk about uh, maybe the way Isaiah kind of got you guys going there in the second half. Yeah, Isaiah, you know, I mean, he, it's, it's weird. You know, he can go through stretches where, you know, and I thought he took good shots in the first half. They didn't go in. We just said, you know, keep shooting them because, you know, we know he's going to anyway, but at least we're just encouraging him to do so. Um, but uh, there's no more ignitable player in America. I mean, what the, you saw like in the Drake game, uh, on that Sunday, I think he, he, he scored like 17 of our 21 points down the stretch. He's also a guy that tends to play his best basketball, you know, in the, in the you know, in, in money time, you know, in those moments of truth down in the late game part of it. And, um, you know, he's just got a great confidence and belief in himself and thought he was outstanding uh, those last 20 minutes, getting downhill, finishing at the rim, a uh, couple steals, big time plays, and um, just, you know, again, as ignitable uh, as anybody. And when he gets going, um, that changes our whole team. He can, he can carry a team by himself. Um, Michael Preston, Starboy.com. As a coach, how satisfying is it to see a bunch of kids go from a crushing disappointment on Selection Sunday and turn it into a journey that you've taken this now to the limit as far as you can go? Yeah, I think, um, you know, I, it, it's inspiring to me. You know, like, like I'm amazed watching them to – if you would have seen them on Monday morning or Monday afternoon after Selection Sunday, uh, I don't know if I've ever seen a sadder, more devastated group uh, than this one. Um, but their iron will, um, you know, is, is there. Like, like they showed it against Drake down 18 with 10 to play. They rallied to take the lead. They never thought they were out of it. They get, you know, heartbreak, lose that game, lose a piece of our heart. You know, we don't get in the tournament. And uh, they always say, you know, the, the true measure of who somebody is is how they respond when things don't go their way, right? So when you look at the true measure of who these young men are, like, it just shows, you know, in the fiber of them, in their core, uh, who they are as human beings. To be able to pick yourself up from that kind of disappointment and, and prepare yourself and go out. And we're down 15 to SMU in the, in the second half. And to find a way through that and, and, and to get here. And I don't want to, because I think, you know, that, that true measure of who you are uh, applies to our fans as well. They didn't treat this like an NIT, like some sort of consolation prize or, eh, you know, we don't care anymore. We didn't make the tournament. Holman Center, and then obviously tonight, they've, they've responded just like our teams respond. It's been amazing to watch both not only our team, but our fans respond to something that was obviously devastatingly disappointing. The Marty Ledbetter, WTHI TV. Uh, the, the starting, or I shouldn't say the starting six, but the six guys that got all conference, I mean, each one of them have had games this year or runs this year that, you know, could make them stars. Robbie becoming the social media star on top of everything else. You've been around a lot of winning clubs. Have you ever been around a club that's this unselfish and full of guys who genuinely don't care if they put up 30 points or zero points as long as they get the win at the end of the day? You know, it's, it's, uh, it's funny, like, you know, we've won 32 games, and I think, I think in the last – this is maybe the sixth time in the last 10 years I've been a part of a team that's won 30 games. That, that, those character traits are hallmarks of those teams. Some have them more than others. 
you know, this team and the 2016 team I was a part of at LMU I've, are the teams that, in terms of, like, absolutely could care less about anything other than each other winning. Like, I think I said this, you know, after Cincinnati, you know, this group's superpower is how much it cares. And, and they care about each other. They care about winning. They care about their individual performance. They hold themselves to an incredibly high standard. Uh, they care about the fans. They care about Indiana State. They care about their families. They care about Terre Haute. Um, that's why I think they're so beloved. But that's their superpower. You know, I mean, it's a group that, you know, on its own accord is really good. But when you look at it, you know, the, the sum of this group is much greater than the individual parts because everybody's bought in the right things. It's almost in, in an era of NIL and, and transfer portal, uh, sadly, a throwback team. But that's what it, it feels like. It's a throwback to the old days where, man, we, we love each other. We love winning. We care about each other. We don't want this ride to end. Let's everybody put aside everything. You can see the bench guys aren't playing. I mean, I'm over there. Jake Wolf started 100 games in his career. He's not playing. He's into the game. Aaron Gray, you know, had multiple 30-point games in Division One. He hasn't taken his jersey off, put his jersey on in I don't know how many games. He's over there living and dying with every possession. Like, the, the, the quality character of this team is not just – the guys you see, but it's the unseen, and it's really from guy one to 15. It's It's been – I've never had a more fun year coaching than I have. It's been truly uh, an honor to come to work with these guys every single day. Okay, we have one more time for one more question for Coach. Uh, Hunter Tickle from Tribune Star in Terre Haute, Indiana. Coach Schertz, you had a, uh, a moment there in that, that second half with Swope where he's he's starting to get catch fire, like you said earlier, and, and he's scoring points. It's a steal, it's getting the rhythm, and then he has that pass from the left, left sideline at midcourt. I'm just curious in terms of that pass and like what these guys do. Xavier Bledson can make that pass. Probably five or six guys on that team can make that pass. How much are you working on that, like clinical passing and, and like delivering passes like that in practice and teaching them? No, nah, I mean you can't teach that stuff. That's uh, that's just innately in them. Um, I think I think what we do do is free them up to to make those plays. You know, to feel like they can they can make those plays and you know that's what we've tried to do is is give them you know the the freedom to feel like they can attack and and you know Jabo and Robbie I mean Swope to me is not a, a great passer but that was a great pass you know um that was an elite pass we have guys on the team who are elite passers um and and Julian's developing into one but um you know that play that bounce pass full court I mean was was remarkably a remarkably good play, you know, uh, by Isaiah. And, you know, what we do try to do, we, we talk about pass, we work on it, but you can't teach what those guys do. That's that's innately in them, uh, and credit to them on that. All right, Coach, thank you very much. We'll see you again on Thursday. Can't wait. Have a great night.